down below and let's get started. All right, since there's five of us on this channel, we're each going to give you our favorite tip on how to have a smooth homeschool day. This is our sixth year of homeschooling, if you include Bug's preschool year, because she's in fourth grade now. So we learned a few things along the way, and we hope this can help. All right, Bug, what is your number one tip on how to have a good, smooth homeschool day? Keep it fresh. If there's something monotonous and boring, like, like, if, like say your student was learning how to add two digit numbers and the and and the whole lesson and the, all the problems consisted of 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30. <laughs> that would be monotonous, repetitive and and stale. <laughs> so when Bug and I talked about her idea of what um, helps to have a good homeschool day, a few ideas came up and we summed it up with keep it fresh and um, she talked about how she doesn't like to do the same thing over and over and over again. So one idea you came up with, Bug, was if something, make things optional? Yes. What if the kid taught herself pre-algebra and she's being asked to do pre-algebra now? So she can skip that. Right. So in a curriculum, if a child is looking at a page with 50 questions, and a lot of them are the same and they clearly understand that there's no reason to finish the page. We homeschool for a reason. It doesn't matter if they finish the page. We want them to understand the concept. That's our main goal. Um, Bug and I also talked about how if your child is getting frustrated, it's okay to change and it's okay to move on from that subject. There's no reason to keep hounding down the same road, right Bug? Yep, and here's something similar to that. Keep ha don't keep hounding down the same road. Keep one step ahead, the kid. Like, like, Ooh. what if the kid's getting frustrated, like, like, and they're about to scream, I hate this, and quit it. Then, and then say, okay, why don't we move on to something else and finish this tomorrow when you're a little, when you've had a good night's sleep. There you go, yeah. So that fits under keep it fresh. There's no reason to do the same thing for an hour. If the child is not getting it and tempers are starting to raise, it's time to keep it fresh, move on, and you can always come back. Here's a silly example. What if your kid is finding it hard to learn about, um, say, something, something like germs? And, and she's supposed to do some kind of germ play, but she's getting overwhelmed. Then, and this is going the part where it gets sleep. Then you can say, well, huh? well, you can journally get it to, like to, totally. Like totally, <laughs> do it, to, do it, it tomorrow. <laughs> Good one, Bug. All right, so Bug, again, your tip was to? Keep it fresh. All right, I'm gonna do my tip next. Do you wanna stay here for my tip or do you wanna skedaddle? I like to stay here. All right, so my tip as a homeschool mom is be prepared. Can you name the movie? Lion King. Lion King. Sarah, Scar, and the Hyenas. Uh -huh. Except for I'm not Scar, right? Of course not. <laughs> All right, so um, be prepared. That can be if you wanna buy yourself an open and go curriculum, that's what you do. If you want to spend one day a month prepping everything, that's what you need to do. Be prepared so the next morning when you wake up late and you don't have time to do everything you had planned and you have four kids waiting on you, you don't lose them while you go and make those copies. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do what you need to do the night before. Have breakfast ready. Uh, if you are going somewhere on field trip days or co-op days, a lot of times I'll lay the clothes out to help our morning go smoothly. That's 
just general mom, mom tips. But as far as curriculum, have an idea of what you're doing the next day. You don't have to have a written out lesson plan. Again, we homeschool for a reason, but know as the mom what you're going to do and have the stuff prepared. So you are ready to hit the ground running when your kids are ready to learn. Because if you aren't ready, they're gonna go off and they're gonna start playing. I don't know, what are you gonna start playing, Bo? Well, maybe, well, maybe we'll start playing. Uno or something. Yeah, they're gonna start a game of Uno, which we all know takes three hours to play, and you're either gonna have to break up that game or wait. So my tip again is be prepared. Yeah, and also if you wanna check it out, we'll link it down below. Um, we did a video on how we plan, and it was actually part of this collab a few months ago, um, that included our planning sheet. So if you want an idea of how I plan ahead and pick what we're doing which days, um, be sure to check out that. Can you um, go ahead and go grab Bear for us? Okay. Thanks, sis. I have Bear here for tip number three, and tip number three is? So, do something that, that you, that you and your child are interested in. Very good. What does that mean, Bear? So, do something that you and your child wants. Okay, so, for example, Bear loves nature and she loves art. So she really enjoys the Good and the Beautiful curriculum, right? Yes. Especially the math. Um, math, Bear enjoys math anyways, but when we tried to move to a different curriculum that was more just writing it, she did not enjoy it as much. She loves all the beautiful things, the art that's incorporated in the Good and the Beautiful and the nature that's incorporated, right? Yes. All right. Um, the nature is my favorite part. <laughs> the nature is her favorite part. Okay. So this also means that we try and do a lot of nature study, and if we can, we go sit out in the backyard and do a school. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Anything else you can think of that we try and include um, art and nature in our school? Nature study? Yeah, with nature study. We what? do art and nature and nature study. That's right. We have started a nature journal, and... Um, <laughs> where the kids get to go out to nature and they get to add some kind of art to that nature journal. So that gets both of them. So is there anything else you'd like to add, Bear? Um, no. No? Okay, so Bear's here to say make sure that it's something that you and your child do enjoy. I want to say one more thing on that really quick, okay, Bear? Okay. This also means if the curriculum isn't working for you or your child, it's okay to stop the curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bear? Yes. So if you need to go away and find a different curriculum mid-year, that's okay. We did that last year with math. We probably got two months into your other math curriculum, and yeah. she had previously used the Good and the Beautiful. We tried to move away from it, and she just, every day, please, can I go back and do that fun, you know, the games and the nature and everything. So find the curriculum that... Um, brings in what's important to your family and what your kids and you enjoy. All right, Bear, do you have anything else to say? No. Okay, why don't you run and get Belle for me, please? All right. So I have Boo Boo here with tip number four from our family. And Boo Boo, what is your tip? Mm. Find something for me to do. <laughs> okay, so as homeschooling families, a lot of times we have younger kids and our older kids do take up a lot more time of our day for their schooling, but it's important for these little ones to have something to do. Otherwise, you're gonna get a bad surprise. Boo and I filmed a video with her busy bags um, a couple months ago, so we'll link that down below. And that's one thing that I do when I'm working with the other girls that Boo can go and get with whatever sister is not currently working with me, and they work together for Boo Boo School. So, during morning basket, I do have some little activity for her to do. I also try and include a storybook that she will be interested in. Um, if the other girls are coloring, I like to have a coloring page okay, that she can color also. Mama, can, um, um, cookies that I can make her for Halloween. <laughs> what kind of cookies are we going to make for Halloween? Mm, how about eight cookies and five cookies? Okay, eight cookies and five cookies. So... I like to have a coloring sheet that she can color along so she's part of the lesson. Then when I start working on individual subjects with the kids is when the busy bags come in, um, their school toys out. I'm generally rotating through the other girls so there's usually someone free to play with her if you don't have that option. 
Busy bags are still a great option. You can um, keep the kids busy one at a time. They just rotate through them. Okay, two days a week. Um, I am doing math with both Bear and Belle at the same time. So that doesn't leave a buddy for her. So during that half an hour time, I do let her play the iPad. So we do have some apps on the iPad that are appropriate for her, Con Kids, um, there's an Elmo numbers app. There's a super Y letters app and she can go and play those next to us at the table while I'm working with Bear and Belle. And then once she's done with that, the iPad goes away. So there are a time for electronics. In my opinion, if that's not your deal, that's great. There's um, lots of other choices that you can make. Okay, Boo, are you done? Do you have anything else to say about school? Yeah. What do you like about school? Um, playing my school. All right, Boo, you are all finished. Can you go get Belle and tell her that it's her turn to be with Mama? Yeah. Okay. Belle, it's your turn. All right, so I have Belle here with tip number five from our family on how to have a great homeschool day. Belle, what tip did you come up with? So you have to think of good rewards to offer to your child to make them want to do school for the reward. Okay, and what does that mean in our at our home school? How do we do that? So, we have the prize, prize machine, also called the prize box, where you pick prize whenever you have five stickers. And we have Mom and Fun Friday. Fridays that we have fun on. <laughs> so the prize machine is pretty simple. The girls have a calendar. If they get five stickers, they get to go to the prize machine and pick something. And we showed how that works in that planning video that I will link down below. If you wanna see how we do rewards, um, it works well for my kiddos to know that they have to get their schoolwork done and they have to do it with a positive attitude and then they get that reward and that reward is a big incentive. All right, and the second thing Belly mentioned was Mama Fun Friday. And we only get to do Mama Fun Friday after the week's school work has been completed. If we didn't finish one day of math, because we do four days of math, it needs to be done before we can start the games or whatever fun activity we have planned. So Belle, what is your favorite thing to do on Mama Fun Friday? Uh, I just really like it. But what's your favorite thing we do? Remember one time we went to go get donuts? <laughs> that was fun. We did one time. We went. To, we had an errand to run in town, so we went and grabbed donuts as part of our thing. Thank oh. you for watching. Our don't forget to check out the playlist. Please like and subscribe. Please. <laughs> and if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below, and we'll do our best to answer them. Have a great day. Have a nice day. day. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.